Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of a brand new uh, political news channel here called Gov Squad News, GSN for short. And today we're going to be overviewing the candidates in the congressional simulation for each period. Here I have Mr. Zach Duvall in charge of the media during the simulation. I am Mr. Jared Lucas, and then this here is Mr. Liam Bates as well. So, gentlemen, let's go ahead and start off here. First period, the race has been full of incredible candidates. For the Orange Party, we have Mr. Aiden Hodgson and his vice presidential running mate, Justin Barrick. Any thoughts so far on the race run by the Orange Party up to this point after just finishing up the primaries this week? I personally think Aiden made an excellent political move in choosing uh, Justin as his candidate. Justin seemed to be polling as a potential rival to Aiden's in order to sort of come together and unify the party, I think was an excellent political move. And Zach, from the media's perspective, uh, how is the perception right now? Aiden is very popular, actually, as well as Justin, but Aiden has done a great job with his campaigning. He has been handing out cookies and candy and anything else in front of other classrooms. He's been making amazing posters, and he's been creating a social media presence, which is going to help him in the long run. That's right. Shout out to Kaylin Brown, actually, for making that incredible poster for him. And just to recap the Orange Party debate, since I, I was there for that, uh, it came down to him and Trenton Collins. and. They originally had a tie vote, it had to move to a runoff vote, and Aiden won by a single vote. So, uh, we'll move on to the Purple Party here uh, for first period. Any thoughts on the Purple Party, gentlemen? Uh, there was definitely an upset in terms of uh, the delegates seemed to, I, I wanna say the delegates seemed to not quite understand maybe the influence money truly had on the election process. Uh, Noah had come through as a very strong candidate, but was not able to match the funding of candidate Chase here. So, that's right. Any thoughts, Mr. Duvall? Uh, I just gotta say that I love their slogan, Shake and Bake, Six Pound, Eight Ounce, Sweet Baby Jesus. Gotta love the callback to uh, Ricky Bobby. That's right. So again, Chase Cannon, the nominee for the Purple Party, chose Carson Watts as his vice presidential running mate. And for first period, we have an independent running. Mr. Trenton Collins. Um, now, Mr. Duvall, I understand you're very familiar with Mr. Collins. Uh, explain to us, why did he decide to run as a third party candidate? Trenton's kind of a wild card. He has been very passionate about his campaign this entire time, and he really thinks that he has what it takes to be president, and so he is running as an independent candidate as a uh, very strong centrist, I would say. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead real quick, ladies and gentlemen, and take a look at the polling for first period today. The first poll came out, and we got to see where the candidates stand in terms of the electorate. All right, so with first period, we had the first set of polls come out today, ladies and gentlemen, and here's what they did, okay? Uh, first of all, when it came to who got the most votes, 45.1% of the votes, as you can see there, went to Mr. Aiden Hodson and his vice presidential running mate, Justin Barrick of the Orange Party. So we got an Orange Party majority here in first period, it would appear. Now, remember, we said earlier that Trenton Collins is deciding to run first period as an independent candidate. So it would appear, surprisingly, despite the fact that he went in the Orange Party primary, that he's actually splitting the Purple Party here. Because what we see is that the Purple Party and Trenton Collins each have 27.5% of the vote. So you can assume that Trenton Collins is taking away and siphoning off some Purple Party voters as a result of that. And so again, the Purple Party, Chase Cannon, Vice Presidential running mate Carson Watts are pulling at 27.5%, but in the shock of the day, perhaps, Trenton Collins pulling at 27.5% as well. And that's first period for you. All right, then moving on, ladies and gentlemen, to second slash tenth period. One of the more unique government periods of the day because uh, I don't have another tenth period government class. Mr. Bates has a second period government class with no other matching ones. Mr. Duvall kind of out of the loop on this one. But in second slash tenth period, the Orange Party tickets uh, had the nomination won by Ms. Aubrey Hughes, and Shelby Griff Giffen was chosen as her vice presidential running mate. And uh, Shelby, still need to email me that uh, other picture you want used. Now, here with the Orange Party logo, a lot of strange things going on here. They got Peter Giffen as the Joker. Uh, Peter Griffin, I don't know. I don't even know what that is. But uh, so Aubrey won the nomination uh, over Cindy. And then for the Purple Party second period, Eden Britton chose Mitchell Malone. 
as their vice presidential running mate. Uh, Mr. Bates, any thoughts on the Purple Party running into uh, kind of a, a split in the party, if you will? Because we have an independent running also in second slash 10th period, right? Hannah Robb. Yes. So Hannah Robb uh, was the Orange Party candidate uh, for second period. Uh, felt as though she did not have enough representation and that she could appeal to voters stuck in the middle, decided to run a third party campaign. Eden, on the other hand, chose a brilliant strategy in that herself being more of what I would consider moderate, decided to pick Mitchell as her running mate in order to fill all the spectrum of the Purple Party. So, brilliant move on her part. We'll go ahead and check the second slash 10th period polling results, which just finished up today. Okay, so with the polling second and 10th period here, not a big surprise. We've got Aubrey and the Orange Party in the lead significantly, 63.3%. That would probably put her as the odds on favorite next week to win the election come Wednesday. Now, in a little bit of a surprise, Hannah Robb running as an independent actually outpolled the Purple Party. And so 23.3% of the vote went to her, 13.3% of the vote went to Eden Britton of the Purple Party, and that's where we stand, second slash 10th period. And then we move on to third period. In third period, there are only two government classes. I have a class as well as Mr. Duvall. Mr. Duvall, you actually were at the Purple Party convention this week. Tell us what you know. I was. It was a very amazing convention with lots of great ideas. We had three candidates that were in the running, and one that came out victorious with really good strategy with your money. And so I think that will be very important carrying her forward as the voters recognize that. Now in a uh, really turn of shocking events, her vice presidential nominee, Eli Bridges, decided he was gonna drop out of being her VP and run independent. And so third period, we actually have quite a few independent candidates. This is a, a wild race. But from the Orange Party, it was uh, not quite as competitive. Nia Lawrence won the Orange Party nomination and shows C.J. Whaley to be her vice presidential running mate. And again, as we just mentioned in the Purple Party, Mr. Duvall, Alana Summers won the nomination and then chose Kaylin Brown to replace Eli Bridges as her vice presidential running mate. So we'll take a look at the polling today and see how the independent candidates are stacking up. That includes Eli Bridges, as well as Erica Morris, and then Riley Coyle, formerly of the Orange Party, is deciding to throw her hat in the ring as a third party candidate as well. Okay, so here's the third party polling. We've got a lot going on. It looks like someone vomited on the screen. So right here, 34.6% of the vote is going to Nia Lawrence of the Orange Party. However, 30% of the vote, and this is a staggering number as well, is going to independent candidate Riley Coyle. 23% um, of the vote is going to independent candidate Eli Bridges, and 11% of the vote is going to independent candidate Erica Morris. The Purple Party did not get any votes in a shocking turn of events. The independent candidates are scoring better than the Purple Party is, which is going to make things very interesting once Congress convenes. This looks like something you would see out of a European country with all of these different parties actually getting a sizable chunk of the vote here. So we can probably assume then that the Orange Party is very well unified and backing Niall Lawrence. And then next week, two of these candidates actually earn spots on the debate stage. Riley Coyle, as well as Eli Bridges, they'll be on the debate stage. It's gonna be very interesting to see how third period turns out coming next Wednesday. Uh, we'll see how their debate performances are and how that ties into their performance come election day. All right, and then moving on to period four or five, the Orange Party nominee is Asante, and he chose Noah to be his vice presidential running mate. And then for the Purple Party, Max Little chose Braley Finstermaker to be his vice presidential running mate. And then we have some independent candidates as well. Torin Jenkins and Zach Seifert are also running as uh, candidates for the election. So I can tell you from the Orange Party, um, Noah was very popular. He ended up winning the popular vote that day. However, Asante came out on top after all the money was dished out to the states for campaign ads. The delegates chose Asante. In a very smart move, he decided to choose Noah, the winner of the popular vote, to try to unify everyone behind their ticket uh, in the Orange Party. We'll see today if the polling worked or not. But uh, go ahead and tell us, Mr. Bates, a little bit about the Purple Party primary. So yeah, the Purple Party uh, primary was much like it had been uh, many times during that day where 
uh, people that were more strategic about their spending tended to come out on top. Uh, it showed that perhaps maybe money has a bigger play into politics than what we originally thought. Um, but Max has been running a good campaign, a good populist man of the people campaign. Um, and I expect to see great things moving forward with his ability to keep people engaged even with a broken system where there's more independence running. So. And Mr. Duvall, what's been your thoughts on the fourth fifth period campaigns? I would agree with Mr. Bates that uh, Max is running a very great campaign right now, especially by offering cookies to those who are voting for him. Uh, they tasted very good, by the way, because yes, I had to I sample them. Yes. Uh, but him choosing Braley as his vice president has been a really good move as well because she is very organized and has been helping keep his campaign on track. Looking at the Orange Party, Asante and Noah are both top-tier students in class that are very uh, vocal about their opinions in a respectful way, of course, and are always participating, so they have very well-detailed plans for how they want to run the government together, so I think it's going to be a very tough race for both parties. Let's go ahead and check the polling today and see how everyone matched up. In a never-before-seen poll, we've never seen anything like this before, we actually had a tie for the top two positions in this race. It is dead even, ladies and gentlemen. So, Asante from the Orange Party earned 33.8% of the vote, and then President, uh, presidential candidate Max Little of the Purple Party earned 33.8% of the vote as well. Zach Cyphers took in a sizable chunk as well, 27.5%, but you can only assume, since he was a Purple Party candidate, that he is siphoning votes off from the Purple Party here, and so as a result of that, it's a deadlock between the Orange Party and the Purple Party. And then Torn Jenkins as well, you can assume too that he's probably siphoning some votes off of the Purple Party as well. So we've never seen anything like this. I have no idea what the betters are going to decide for next week, but it is dead even, ladies and gentlemen, between the Orange Party and between the Purple Party. Period 6-7, gentlemen. Where do we begin? Wow. Uh, let's start with the Orange Party. Ian Cannon and Amber Stewart, both strong candidates uh, for the Orange Party and doing very well in the polls, I believe. Absolutely. And then from the Purple Party, Kara Smith and Samuel Adams, can you speak to them, Mr. Bates? Uh, so certainly. So this was the upset of the day to watch for us political people. Uh, Kara Smith ended up securing the nomination with uh, absolutely no support of the party other than herself and the pocket donations of various corporations. So she, however, did make the smart play to tap Samuel Adams as her VP uh, in order to secure the vote since Samuel Adams had achieved over 50% of the popular vote. So their hope moving forward was that they could unify the party, which did not end up being the case. Well, speaking of not unifying the party, we have quite a few candidates uh, running as independents, Jake Black, who chose Connor Parsley as his vice presidential running mate, decided to throw his hat into the ring, and Clayton Stimford as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the polling and what could be another chaotic period in the government simulation. We have another really tight race here in 6 sevens period. We've got presidential candidate Ian Cannon of the Orange Party with 41.2% of the vote, but close behind, only a few votes behind. We have the Purple Party and Kara Smith with 35.3% of the vote. And then Jake Black, the Independent, getting enough to be invited to the debate stage next week, which is gonna be huge for him and his campaign. 23.5%, despite some of the things he said this week. He said, for example, that he wanted the Russians to help intervene. He even had some comments uh, about bribing the media as well. In a very contentious campaign, he's viewed by some as a bit of a maverick, a bit of a, a loose cannon, if you will. Um, he Polling at 23.5% was definitely, in my opinion, the shock of the day, and we'll see how he performs next week. It's possible he is splitting the Purple Party a little bit here, and he may hand the election over to Ian Cannon with a performance like we've seen so far from Mr. Jake Black. The ninth period has quite a few really quality candidates 
in the Orange Party ticket, Ash Prather won the nomination and chose Riley Thompson as her vice presidential running mate, who also ran for the Orange Party nomination. Zach, I understand you're pretty familiar with these two candidates. Uh, yes, Ash has led a really strong campaign. She's willing to work with all sides of the, the parties, it seems like. She's already talking about using people from the Purple Party as part of her cabinet as a way to show that she is willing to work with America to make America a truly wonderful country. That's right, and then moving on to the Purple Party, um, Cole Morgan ended up winning the Purple Party nomination and chose Nathan Streeby. Now, Nathan Streeby, he won the popular votes by a landslide with the Purple Party. However, Cole Morgan, with the political action committees and special interest groups that donated to him, he was able to really strategize, put his money around all of the states, and he ended up winning the most delegates and chose Nathan Streeby in a very smart move uh, to kind of prevent Nathan from running in it as an independent because he could have gotten a lot of the votes from the Purple Party. Uh, Mr. Bates, what have, what's been your thoughts so far on Nathan Streeby? Uh, so yeah, so Cole has positioned himself as sort of the populist candidate in that uh, he believes that the establishment of the Purple Party was trying to keep his voice from being heard. Uh, so he did end up securing the nomination. I'm a little curious to see where he ends uh, in terms of will he continue his streak of, um, I, I don't know what the best term for it would be other than maybe a bit of a maverick. So. And one of the more interesting stories of the debate, you know, and I would say is Miss Michaela Lane, who from the Orange Party appeared to be a very, very moderate member. And the Orange Party in ninth period seems to have a lot of factions in it. Does not seem unified. It has a group of moderates and it has a more group of hardliners. She was of the more moderate group. And so uh, she had support from moderates and I think she decided to run as an independent as a result of seeing that divide there. So we have Miss Michaela Lane who's running as an independent as well. The question today though was, was she gonna get enough? Was she gonna get that 15% to be invited to the debate stage where she may actually be able to appeal to both parties and have a great chance as a third party candidate to win? Uh, Mr. Bates, what's your thoughts on Miss Lane's uh, announcement to run as an independent? I think she's a very well-researched candidate, had a lot of potential moving forward. I think now that the field has lessened down to and it's a very clear pick between uh, the purple or orange. I think she's going to find a good place in that center area to appeal to those moderate voters. All right, in one of the most anticipated moments of the show, let's go ahead and reveal the ninth period polling from today. Okay, here's the polling for ninth period. Definitely the Purple Party dominating the polls today. 52.2% of the votes, one of the highest margins that we have seen so far today. The Orange Party following in with 31.3% of the vote, but Michaela Lane, could she get to 15% today? The answer was yes, she gets to 16.4% today, just barely. So she's gonna get a seat on the debate stage and we'll see if she's able to communicate to the voters and maybe increase this margin enough to a win. I don't know, but we'll see next Tuesday during the debates and the next Wednesday for the election. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for Gov Squad News, I'm Mr. Lucas. I'm Mr. Duvall. I'm Mr. Bates. And we're signing off. Back to you for sports. Forget that. This is Gov Squad News. GSN. Gov Squad News. Hi, welcome to the blooper reel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Let's do it. Uh, you ready? What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Making a table. You, it's not in the shot. Oh. This is what we did. This is what right someone's never done theater before. Yeah, okay. it's showing. tripping over myself. This is my co-workers, ladies and gentlemen. You think they're mature, and then the bell rings, this is who they become. 